How's it going everyone? It's Mitchell with another Logic Pro 10 tutorial. Today I'm going to be giving you an overview, a pretty high level overview of the workflow inside Logic Pro 10. And this workflow is my workflow. This could be totally different for what you do. I just wanted to explain what I do to track a song from beginning to the very end. Uh, so let's get right into it. First things first, we want to create a new track. And uh, uh, continue. Uh, so to create a new track in Logic, you can use any of the templates that Logic offers you. That's perfectly fine. I would suggest, though, creating your own template. Once you start getting into Logic, you start defining things every single time. Auxiliary tracks that you're going to use every single time. Track stacks that you're going to use every single time. Groups that you're going to use every single time. It's nice to just create a template so those are going to be already created for you inside of Logic. I haven't created a tutorial on this, but I hope to in the future. So create a new track, whether it be from a template or from your personal template or from a Logic template. Next, you're going to want to start adding, recording your tracks. You want to start getting material into your arrange window. And you can do that by through audio, through MIDI. You can drag and drop some loops. If you don't want to use loops, you know, sometimes just going in there and grabbing inspiration from some of the things you hear is also good as well. So start adding material to your arrange window. Next, you're going to want to start arranging that material in a logical view of what a song would be. A song structure is, that, is what's going on at this point. And that's where I kind of am. I'm, I'm tracking right now, and I'm also uh, trying to create an arrangement. Uh, and, that, and that's what I, where I am at this point in this song that you have in front of you. So actually, I'll just play this a little bit right now. Alright, so that's where I am. It's just guitar and it's just a basic drummer uh, as the kit on the top, top track. So as you can tell, it's mixed a little bit. Uh, so that's going to be my next point, is while you are arranging, while you are adding your tracks, get a very rudimentary um, mix as you are creating your tracks. And you're going to want to do this because when you start tracking something like vocals, you want a pretty decent representation of the song uh, so that the uh, vocalist can hear what's actually going on in the song and can sing as best as he or she can. So that's the next step, is to create a rudimentary mix as you are uh, creating and arranging your tracks. All right, so once you are done with arrangement, the next thing would be to do is to just get a basic mix. You're going to want to just control the faders of every single one of your tracks. So if you go to the mixers, I would just play with the mix or with the fader, the volume faders on every track. I wouldn't really touch any of the plugins. I wouldn't go into this in too much depth in depth, but uh, just just get a decent mix with your tracks. Because the next part, what we're going to be doing is defining groups. And what I like to call this is defining instrument groups. Uh, in, in something like rock and alternative, something where you have guitars and bass and drums, the instrument groups become or are, are logically defined already. Like right now, I have my guitars right here, and I would group those into a group. Um, and I would group the, the drums, I would group the bass, the vocals, the, all the electronic elements, um, and then I would mix these together, mix these groups alone. I would solo that out, and I would mix them alone without all the other tracks. It kind of helps you focus in on a particular part of your song and get really in-depth. And this is where you want to start adding all of your EQ, your compression, your reverb, your delay, uh, whatever else you want to put on your tracks. This is where you want to go in-depth into that. All right. Um, and, and another thing to mention here is that with something like alternative music, it's a little bit easy to define your instrument groups, but what about something like electronic music? At this point, it becomes a little bit more difficult, and you can do something, you can break it up into leads and basses and uh, your kit, whatever, all the drum elements, uh, but, but honestly, another way to do it is break it up by frequency. So if you have some high frequency elements, you can break those into a group, some low frequency elements, some bass, um, break that into a group. You might want to split some of the things up in your, the mid-range frequencies. Uh, there, there, that is a particular way of doing it, but it is a little bit harder uh, than the traditional way of defining particular instrument groups. So that's another way to do it. 
Another thing to mention here in this step is that it's really nice and easy to view your groups when you color your tracks. So I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to select guitar lead, shift click the rest of my guitar tracks, right click on the track header, and then assign it track color. I'm going to assign it uh, red. Then what I'm going to do is select the rest of the files on those tracks, and then I'm going to go to functions, and then I'm going to color regions by track color and then that will turn all of the regions red based on the track header color. Uh, so color your regions. This kind of helps you create a division uh, between what's going on in your mix and, and it's a way to logically view your groups. So finally in this stage you're going to want to at the end of it mix and bus all of your groups all the tracks in a single group down to a single auxiliary track, a single fader, so that you can control the volume of the entire group. You can also do this by using track stacks. Uh, if you were to create a track stack of these particular guitars, you can control the volume of all of them with the master or header track to that track stack. Uh, so this is important when we get into the next step. And the next step is to uh, f do the final mix. Um, this is going to be should be pretty easy. Once you have mixed your group separately, all you have to do is mix each group against each other. And um, I mean, this is, uh, I say it's going to be easy, but sometimes it's very difficult because you do have to work with EQ a lot to make sure that these particular elements and groups are sitting nicely with each other. Um, but I have tutorials on all of these steps. I will hopefully be posting uh, links to all of the videos where I go over this in, in a little bit more depth. So after you get a final mix, the next thing to do is just master it. Uh, make sure while you are mixing and at your final mix, you want to have headroom of about anywhere from I would say four to eight decibels maybe of headroom on your output track. So let's take a look at where I am right now with this track. Alright, so it looks like I have about 5 decibels of headroom currently on the output track, and I might bring that down just a little bit. It's going to be a little bit more difficult once I start adding more tracks, but a part of mixing is to make sure that we keep that headroom, because number one, it's easy to mix when we have a lot more headroom, it's going to be easier to master when we have headroom, and it just kind of prevents us from not clipping at all, and that is exactly what we want to do, and that's the reason for the headroom on the track. So next is going to be mastering. You can do this by yourself, and what I like to, and that's what I like to call pseudo mastering. I have tutorials on this. I can link you to those. Uh, but if you want a professional master, which is, it can come pretty cheap nowadays. Uh, I would bounce this track and uh, just hand it off to somebody. That's what I would do personally if I was creating a track that I wanted to make money off of and share and get make it big in the in the uh, in the industry. So that's what I would do. Uh, so. The next, like I was talking about, is bouncing, sharing your track with the world. Um, so if we go to the bounce menu, you can bounce. I have a tutorial on this as well, but you can bounce as a lossless file, and you can also bounce as an MP3, so you can share it, put it on a CD, uh, give it out to all your friends, and do whatever you'd like. So that's, that's from beginning to end my workflow for how I go about mixing and producing a song. If you have any questions on my process or about your process, uh, let me know. I would be happy to uh, kind of help you work through what's going on, um, and yeah. So everyone, thanks for watching. If you'd like to choose my next tutorial, hit up that survey in the description below. Uh, that will help me quite a bit. And then also, stay bass. Comment, rate, subscribe, and I will be seeing you all very soon. Have a great day.